Hey guys, it is now time to learn about how to find the surface area and volume of pyramids. All right, so we went into detail about what surface area and volume meant in our surface area and volume of prisms video. So we'll assume that you already know this material. Let's go straight into it then. Here is a square-based pyramid. Let us first identify what we call each part of this pyramid so that we can refer back to them. We'll call the bottom of this pyramid the base. And we'll call the rest of the surfaces the lateral faces. So how do you find the surface area of a pyramid? Well, all you need to do is make sure that you find the area of each side and then add it all together. However, do note that this measurement right over here is representing the height of the lateral face and not the height of the pyramid itself. So since this is a square based pyramid, one of the sides will of course be a square we can get the area of the base by doing 10 times 10, which equals 100 centimeters squared. Now let's find the area of the triangular lateral faces so that we can add them to the area of the base to get the total surface area. Fortunately, the height of each triangle is given to us as 15 centimeters. Notice how we are dealing with the height of each triangle and not the height of the pyramid itself. Why? Well, we're trying to find the area of a triangle which should be based on the height of the triangle itself. Since we know the area of a triangle as base times height divided by 2 and we have all the info, we can fill in the formula by doing 10 centimeters times 15 centimeters divided by 2, which equals 75 centimeters squared. And since this pyramid consists of four triangles that are identical in area, we can multiply 75 by 4 to get 300 centimeters squared. If we add all the surface areas we've calculated together, we get 300 plus 100 to give us a total surface area of 400 centimeters squared. Now this was a situation where the height of the triangular lateral faces was given to us, which made it easier to find the surface area of the pyramid. But what if it wasn't given to us and instead we were given the height of the pyramid itself? So let's try another example with different dimensions, but this time given the height of the pyramid instead and see what we would do to find the surface area here. So in this pyramid, we find the area of the base by doing 8 times 8 to get an area of 64 centimeters squared. And now let's deal with the area of the lateral faces that we need to add to this. Hmm, let's think about this for a second. We know that this here is the height of the pyramid. Since the top of the pyramid is in the dead center of the pyramid, we know that this straight line down would mean the very center of the square on the base side. This means that this over here would measure exactly half of 8 centimeters, making it 4 centimeters. And since the height of the pyramid, which is 7 centimeters, creates a 90 degree angle with the 4 centimeter leg that we just discovered, we can use the Pythagorean theorem to find the value of this right here, which is, of course, the hypotenuse of this triangle. And since the hypotenuse of this triangle is the same as the height of this lateral face, we can use this information to find the area of this lateral face. So all we need to do now is to plug in the information we have at our disposal into the Pythagorean theorem, where a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared. 
We have 7 centimeters and 4 centimeters as the measurements for our legs that make up this 90 degree angle. So we will plug them into A and B to get 7 squared plus 4 squared equals C squared. If we simplify this, we get 49 plus 16 equals C squared, and thus 65 equals C squared. We know that we can square root both sides and we'd get roughly 8.06 equals C. Therefore, it turns out to be the case that the height of this triangle is roughly 8.06 centimeters. Notice again how this is different from the height of the pyramid. Good. So now that we have the approximate height, let's find the area of this triangle which we can find by plugging the information we have so far into the formula for finding area of a triangle. This is simply 8 times 8.06 divided by 2 and this works out to be roughly 32.24 centimeters squared. And since there are four of these triangular faces, we will multiply 32.24 by 4, which gives us 128.96 centimeters squared. Now, if we retrieve our area of the base that we had calculated earlier on, which was 64 centimeters squared, and add it to our area of the four lateral faces, we get 192.96 centimeters squared. So the surface area of this pyramid is roughly 192.96, with some room for error since, let's not forget, we did round that 8.06 earlier on during our calculations. All right, so it's important to remember that when you are looking for the surface area of a pyramid, and you're trying to find the area of the lateral faces to add to the area of the base, you cannot use the height of the pyramid to find the area of the lateral faces. We need to use the height of the lateral face itself, which will either be given to us or we might have to find it ourselves through some sort of trick. Of course, in this case, we used our knowledge of the Pythagorean theorem to find the height of the lateral face. Awesome! And what about finding the volume of a pyramid? How would we do that? Well, it's pretty easy. All we have to do is follow this formula right here. Base area times height of pyramid divided by 3. So in this situation, we have both the height of the triangular lateral face over here and the height of the pyramid. If the question was asking us to find the surface area, then we would use the height of the lateral face to find it. But if the question was asking us to find the volume instead, we would focus on the height of the pyramid itself. So we can fill in our formula with the information we have at our disposal. For the area of the base, we do 8 times 8, which equals 64. We multiply 64 by 7 and divide by 3 to get an approximate total of 149.33 centimeters cubed. So there's our volume. So again, take a look at the difference between how to find the surface area of a pyramid and how to find the volume of a pyramid. And try some questions so that you can get used to it in no time. So until next time, have a good one.